Now, after getting our program backlog ready and also exploring those program backlog item in the Agile teams, here the complete Agile release train is getting together to conduct a PI planning meeting. In this particular video, I am talking about a tentative agenda for a PI planning meeting. You can find one example of PI planning agenda at Scaled Agile Framework. This particular tentative agenda is mostly inspired by something which is already there at ScaledAgileFramework.com. You will know you will have your own PI planning agenda based on your own context, but this agenda is a good starting point to understand how possibly a meeting with 100 plus people can be run in an effective way and at the end of it, we can come up with some integrated understanding of what as a whole agile release train we want to do in a PI. So think like there are 125 plus people, the complete agile release train group, the business owners, which is like key stakeholders, the system architect, product management, all these people are coming and sitting together in order to do a PI planning meeting. And your complete agile release train, all group of teams are also present for this particular large event. Now when all these people are coming together, here we are starting with an example of two days of PI planning meeting agenda. Now, this day one and day two gives us a good insight. Again, it is just a default thing to start with. 100 people sitting here or, or uh, face to face or on a Zoom call or in some other virtual tool call and they want to know how do we want to proceed in upcoming PI. So first thing we need to do on a day one is give them a big system view. So everybody has a common understanding about opportunity ahead the milestones which are coming, the technological approaches which we are going to take, where do we stand at a given point in time, all of us should be clear about it. And that's why the initial section of day one is focusing on setting up the system view. Now there could be various way, ways of, of setting up that particular system view. You may have your executive coming in and talking about the business context, what is happening, what, what is happening in the competition, what is happening in the market, what all opportunities are coming to us and why this particular PI is important and how this particular PI event which, which will help us in achieving something which the organization wants to achieve. So we call it, consider it as a strategic alignment how the work which this team is going to do is going to give organization a strategic advantage. This helps us in understanding the overall context in which we are doing this PI planning meeting. So once we get that particular strategic view, we may want to go get into a specific view. Our product management may come and talk about that the features which has been refined, you should be already knowing them based on your Agile team preparation time, which you, you have already done in your innovation and planning iteration. But this is the place where you come to know about, okay, together let's explore this feature and understand what actually these features really mean. So those top features which are candidate for our PI planning meeting may get discussed uh, here. There could be other things as well. Uh, your system architect may talk about some of the technological aspects some of the things which are already explored with the help of enablers or some kind of an exploration in the previous PI. But this information and the learning has to be shared with everyone. Some recommendation for doing coding, some recommendation for doing testing, some recommendation for ensuring overall building quality in the, in the agile release train. There could be a change in definition of done, there could be new infrastructure improvement which you need to consider while you are planning your work. So those kind of a briefing is done by the system architect. They may share a lot of URL talking about a particular resource you can find there, particular architectural uh, related content you can find there, that the database table you can find there. So those kind of a links also get shared when the system architect may give their uh, briefing. Now there could be other elements also. There is a possibility maybe with the release train engineer or by some business owner maybe presented some kind of improvement backlog items. So in the previous program increment you did something, there were some retrospective done and at the end of it, at the end of a PI you had an inspect and adapt event and based on that you picked up some items which you want to work on in this particular PI. There's an improvement items, maybe a, a different way of doing things, some kind of a new guidelines for, for doing development, uh, new guideline for integrating your work. So those improvement backlog items 
which are planned for this particular PI may also get discussed in the in the initial system view of, of setting up the stage for the whole uh, PI planning. You may also pick up things like the current state of the product. Uh, usually just before the PI planning meeting you already uh, uh, you see the whole demo demonstration of the integrated product. Uh, in case that thing was not very well communicated, it is a good idea to have a quick recap where we stand as a product yeah, integratedly before we get into the PI planning details or a breakout level details at an agile team level. So state of a product, state of technical depths, state, state of defects, where do we the complete technological uh, aspect may also get discussed in a system view. So once we are done with this particular section, we uh, each agile team is expected to know where do we stand and what we need to do in order to make this PI successful. What are the milestones and what are the features or set of things will help us in achieving those milestones. So we know what is expected from us and we also know where integratedly we stand. Then the release train engineer may come in and facilitate a team level planning. So in order to achieve these features, this work, each agile team is expected to come up with their part of plan. Now in this team breakout room, the features which individual teams are picking up, they need to get planned in a detailed manner. So why I showed this kind of lines? So it means they are, these are the sessions which are happening in parallel. So based on the discussion and our previous understanding your preparation, we had some features and now we need to work on those features by way of dividing those features into user stories. You might have already done at a preparatory stage the A stage, but this is the B stage of, of your user stories estimation, planning, dependency management and coming up with a plan for upcoming PI. Now when I say a plan for upcoming PI, you can think like that in upcoming PI, assuming I have a 10 weeks duration, I may have a 8 weeks of development iteration. So which means I may have a 4 development iterations. So when I need to come up with a plan for upcoming PI, I need to come up with a plan for my upcoming 4 development iterations. And as a team, I should be able to figure out that by doing these 4 iterations of development, which portion of the program backlog I will be able to finish or which which part of my management expectation, how do I help the management in achieving what they want to achieve from this particular program increment duration. So that is why I am doing this breakout session and I need to come up with my team's plan for upcoming PI. Yeah. Now this plan may have lot of interdependencies. So in while I am doing this particular breakout sessions, I do end up doing various integrated uh, uh, integration of my plans by way of talking to different team and understanding how they are taking a particular dependency, are they planning it in a given iteration, if not I may want to point out that this will create a trouble for my, my release uh, or I may need to understand what part of the, 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 the feature like what all is getting included in a feature which other team has taken because I might be working on a feature and there could be some boundary elements which can go in that team which can come in this team also. So our Teams product owners may be continuously talking to each other, our team scrum masters may also facilitating the dependency exploration and integration while we are preparing this particular first level plan for upcoming PI. So it is like this, we got the big picture and each team got into separate rooms. So you can visualize it that we have a big meeting happening. All of us in, were in the, the big conference room, we got briefed and once the briefing was done, all of the agile teams went into separate rooms yeah? and in those rooms they were planning their part of work. In between there were some scrum of scrum happening. Sometimes the scrum masters were only doing it, sometimes team members are also moving from one room to another room to communicate about dependencies and issues as and when they are, are, are discovering it. If two teams are very closely working with each other, they may decide to sit in the same room but have a separate tables so that they can more frequently talk to each other. So there is no prescription for a format, the room idea I am sharing just to give you a visualization that yes teams are doing their part of work at the same time they are integrating their work as well. And at the result of it they come up with a draft plan. Now while they are doing this thing, they are doing velocity driven planning. 
based on the team capacity or velocity, they figure it out how many story points work they can do in upcoming four iteration. They figure out the sequence of that work, they identify the dependencies and those, those things help us in identifying what this team can do in the given PI. Now once that is done, they do a presentation of their plan. So oh, the, the next section, if you want to take a learning from this breakout room and the first thing we do is called draft plan review. So in this case, think like this, every team gets 10 or 15 minutes to present their plan and take some feedbacks and then go. The next team comes in, they present their plan. And group of stakeholders who are playing the integration role may keep making points and they may realize that uh, there are some gaps, there are some capacity limits, there are some technological challenges, there are some capacity challenges which needs to be taken care before we can resolve these issues. So this draft plan review will help us in discovering lot of things. There could be few teams which are unable to, to, to do what was anticipated that they will be doing. Some features we were anticipating they will do but their load is, is, is too much. There could be few teams who might be able to do the anticipated work in a, in a faster time and they may have a capacity available. There could be various dependencies coming between two teams because the way teams are organized are creating a lot of difficult uh, dependency and maybe we need to reorganize these teams or make people move from one team to another team. So those kind of issues may come as a, as a result of draft plan review. And based on that, we may have a list, a release train engineer may facilitate making that list and we may do something called management review and problem solving. Now many times I get this question, who is this management and what is this management review is happening? So the scaled agile do not give you an answer who is this management. You need to figure it out who is this management for your agile release train, but the idea here is Depending upon the nature of your work, you may have some set of stakeholders who are expected to make decision here so that we can have a workable plan tomorrow. Yeah? And that is the whole purpose of doing this PI planning meeting. Unlike in traditional way, a one business department just gives their requirement and expect that de delivery team to figure out how to achieve it. Delivery team tells that we can't do it and then this whole communication takes one month before some agreement can be reached. Here we are saying we are doing it together. We have the delivery team available, we have the, the business owners, stakeholders available here and they are coming up with their priorities and teams are coming up with their capacity but the balance has to be reached and in order to reach that particular balance both the group has to work together. So this agile release train has to work together. There is no one person who is saying we will do this or we will not do this. We need to collaboratively find out what can we do in order to have workable plan which adds maximum business value to the organization and how do we add to it in the upcoming PI. So management driven problem solving and jointly we need to consider all problems as our problems dependency, capacity, uh, uh, skill gaps, whatever it is, we need to solve that and come up with some adjustments. Now during this time, it is not necessary the whole team stays here. Uh, some of the team members may go, do, go and do their homework for the coming days and, and but there are few individuals who may stay and finally come up with some decisions. Now once these decisions are made, we start with second day. So you can say the day one finishes by learning about what possible things each agile team can do and what are the areas which are not yet resolved and the resolution is getting proposed at the end of a day one. So we learned about their, their team and their stage and we, we have some uh, uh, adjustment identified. Now the day two start with those planning adjustments. So it could be change in priority, it could be descoping a particular feature. And, and making it fit well in a particular time uh, line for a particular team. It could be moving one feature from one team to another team. Yeah. So all these, all options are open. When to apply what option? It depends upon the group which is reviewing and working together to come up with an, an, a, a workable a PI plan. So we do planning adjustment. So usually this planning adjustment might get communicated. Uh, led by release train engineer, maybe some business owner, maybe product management, not a particular person but we identify in your agile release train who is the one who can do this particular uh, a job or a group of people may end up doing this particular job. Now once the planning adjustment get communicated, we have a team breakout rooms again. 
So, the idea here is we again get into different different rooms based on our latest information learning from other teams. We have been learning while doing breakout room as well, but when we saw the draft plan uh, of each team, we learned more about them. And based on those learning, based on these adjustment, now we are reworking and maybe we also got some important idea about the priorities, more details about the priorities and each team is reworking their plan. And ideally by this time, we have a good sense of what we are really trying to do. And usually the release train engineers and scrum masters start continuously integrating the plan while the second breakout room is happening because there is a fair stability in understanding as well as solving this particular uh, 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 problem for coming up with an integrated plan for a, for a PI. So you do this, you, uh, uh, the agile teams also get engaged continuously with the business owners when they are doing this particular activity and they work with them, they take the business priorities for them and understand each the, the, the part of the work which they are planning to do in upcoming PI, their business value as well. And with this, we present the integrated plan again. So more or less in the same way, once the breakout room is over, we have an integrated plan. Many times this integrated plan is not necessarily presented by team by team, but it can be presented together by the group of people where the whole plan is presented to the uh, agile release train. Now here is again the collaboration happening. Now we have a plan and we have a business stakeholder sitting in the PI planning meeting. Do they see this plan workable? And at the same time, we need to make sure our team see, see this particular plan as an achievable. So business feels that yes, we can get our business priorities achieved by this particular plan and the development team feels that yes, we can achieve this particular plan in a given PI. If that is there, then we move forward. If that is not there, we need to do again problem solving and do a rework again. Uh, if there are gaps, there is a misunderstanding, there are something which are critical but not getting uh, fit into our PI, we need to explore what can we do differently. Again, we can't just say this is my priority, I don't know if you, you figure it out how to do it. We need to collaboratively work and there could be a multiple iterations of identifying the problem, adjusting the issue and then again going in a breakout room. There could be some cases where the problems may get resolved without breakout room as well, but we need to have an integrated plan which is acceptable to business as well as uh, coming from the development team where they feel they are good enough to work with it. So assuming by doing few iterations, we achieved an integrated plan which get reviewed, then we talk about risks. So while we were doing team level planning, we do identify various risks and we do come up with possible approaches for those risks. The focus of risk here is more to do with risk on a given PI. We are not talking about global risk and business risks here. We are primarily focusing on what are the things which can probably derails our PI plan. So those risks and what, what, how many risks got identified and how we have resolved them, mitigated them or we are planning to do something about them during the PI planning meeting, we do a review of it. So we share that particular information with the stakeholders. Now you might be wondering why are we doing it? So everybody understands how we are heading, what are the chances we are taking because our business people will also be talking to their stakeholders and when they are communicating, commenting, committing some set of features, they should know the overall uh, uh, uncertainty, some amount of uncertainty which is there behind our PI plan. So those uncertainties get communicated with the help of risk reviews. There is a possibility in some cases some risks are not acceptable and that may also trigger a rework. So there is a possibility of going back at any point in time but we do a risk review and, and uh, uh, related uh, actions if there are any. Assuming the risks were acceptable. And, and that's the best judgment together we are taking, business owners and development team. Then we move forward and we talk about a proper a, a kind of an a exercise which helps us in checking the confidence of the whole agile release train for this particular uh, uh, PI planning. So we take something called PI confidence vote. So as you have learned, the complete agile release train is participating here, each, each agile teams, business stakeholders, everyone is participating in this particular meeting. So the PI confidence vote is taken 
first at a team level. So, each team how confident they are feeling for their part of the work to get, get achieved, their part of the commitments, their part of objectives, how, how comfortable they are. And then once we see a team level confidence coming in, then we also take a program level confidence vote. So, how well, how confident do you feel that we are going to achieve overall program level objective, not only yours one, but you see uh, the, the type of work has been planned, the type of milestone has been planned, how confident are you in achieving that? So, we take a, a fist of five kind of vote, one to five, one is less confidence and five is more confidence. And if you have lot of less confidence, that again can trigger a rework. So, we may need to rework till the time we have reached to a stage where we solve that confidence related problem and we are confident enough to go for this particular PI. Now, you might be wondering there are too much cross checks and confidence checking and all. See the idea here is this is an event which is giving the direction to multiple agile teams with, who are forming agile release train and we, we, we wish to do these kind of events once in a PI. So, there is a gap, there is a around 10 weeks gap. So, between these two, two uh, events, we want to make sure that we provide sufficient amount of visibility and direction to the, to the agile teams, so that they can do their decentralized decision making and so that they can also integrate and align well with other teams. So, we do integrated plan review, we do risk reviews and we do, we do take a confidence vote and if there is something missing, we end up doing rework to come up with a workable PI plan. Finally, we reach to a stage which is called planning retrospective. So, this retrospective is not a retrospective of your whole PI, it is the only retrospective of PI planning meeting. So, you have been planning for last two days and you might have observed, oh, like we should have done this differently. Next time onwards, we should have more breakout rooms. Next time onwards, we should have these things clear before coming to a PI planning meeting. Or, or, or you may realize that, okay, these debriefings are taking too much time. Can we optimize it by way of having some kind of email communication in advance so that debriefing can go faster? or uh, some kind of a gaps between breakout room or dividing the PI planning meeting in, in three days or four days rather than running at stretch for, for two days. So, there could be various ideas which can get compiled at the end of your first PI planning meeting if you are doing it uh, first time and then you refine the release train engineer may take a lead in finding out how do we move forward with the new PI planning meeting. Now, this was more or less focusing on the agenda part of it. But if I summarize based on this whole agenda, the input to a PI planning meeting which came here was more or less focusing on the refined program backlog items which are prioritized, which are sized enough they fit well in a given PI for an agile release train. That is the primary input. There could be additional input talking about the technological aspect, talking about the current state of our product and talking about our improvement backlog items. But the primary input is the prioritized program backlog. Now, once we reach towards the end and we will explore those uh, uh, elements further, uh, further in our subsequent videos, as an output, we generate primarily two types of output. One output is called PI objective. So, by the time we reach to a, a, a second breakout rooms and all, each teams finalize their PI plan and they summarize that particular plan in the language which business can understand, the language which is outcome oriented and that is called team level PI objective. So, the team level PI objective shows what this team is intending to do in a given PI. So, that is a, that's a one output comes in and then the, the the management, release train engineer, everybody work together to integrate team level PI objective at a ART level PI objective as well. So, that is the, the one output which get generated from this particular two days of PI planning meeting. The second output which comes as a result of these two days of PI planning meeting is called program board. We will explore it in little more detail in the subsequent video. The idea of a program board is understanding the interdependency between various teams in order to achieve PI objective. So, I have an objective to achieve and I need to visualize how I am dependent on each other in order to achieve that and I visualize it in the form of a dependency diagram which is called program board. So, this PI objective and program board starts getting prepared on the day 2 itself. It starts from the draft plan review at itself 
and but in the day two they start getting more and more refined and by the end of it each team has their PI objective and as an agile release train we have a joint PI objective as well as we have a joint program board which shows an integrated view for our upcoming PI.